we're going to um, uh, continue on the, the topic uh, that we um, started on Wednesday. Um, so on Wednesday, we uh, talk about homework assignment number four, um, which in fact is a um, um, important homework for us to really understand what is the fourth or the last key concept about um, uh, object-oriented programming is called polymorphism. So you might have heard about the term polymorphism. Uh, by the way, where the inheritance is covered in chapter 13 of our textbook and polymorphism is on the chapter 14. Uh, but they're in fact related. Uh, polymorphism usually come with inheritance. That's why we kind of cover uh, both chapter together. Okay, um, um, this is probably uh, not only very important um, um, topic, but also probably the, the most challenging in, um, in C++, not just in object-oriented programming, but polymorphism in C++ uh, tend to create uh, some complexity due to the nature of C or C++. So we're, we're trying to go over that. And then, uh, and then we're going to go talk about multiple inheritance, which is multiple inheritance is in chapter uh, 13. So we kind of jump around between these two. Okay, so first I want to um, just tell you that what is the definition for polymorphism? And then we can actually see how it, it actually works in uh, in programming language like a C plus plus. So by by definition, if you ask people what is polymorphism in object oriented programming, um, essentially is saying that you have the same interface, but then the behavior when you try to approach this interface might be different. So, so essentially, in programming, we usually like something we call predictability, mean, meaning that I have a program, I call this function, that this function is basically giving me exactly the behavior I'm, I'm expecting. But in polymorphism, we try to provide some flexibility, meaning that, oh, I look at the interface of a particular class, but then when I try to call this interface, which for example, a member function, then the function seems to behave differently. And that, that is the, the key concept. So, so polymorphism is provide us some flexibility and such that we actually be able to, when we model the, the, um, the, the objects in our system, that the object might respond differently even though when we are the, the programmer, we're accessing this interface, it looks to us is exactly the same interface. Okay, so at, at the higher level, that's what we mean by uh, polymorphism. I mean, polymorphism, you, you can probably imagine pretty much the same with any other programming language construct that it could be a little bit confusing because this means that you actually call it, it might not actually give you what you expect, but it also powerful because it allow you to have some flexibility about modeling the behavior of the function. Of course, that which behavior is coming in uh, is actually can be determined either by the compiler time or runtime. By the way, that that's uh, for example, we have seen a virtual function we determine at runtime, which determine what is the polymorphic behavior. So, so it's fair to say that virtual function is C plus plus way to realize polymorphism. Okay, just just in the context of C plus plus. Okay. So I'm going to, before I actually give you a more concrete example, I'm going to see there's a chat. Uh, no, we don't have a participation today. I don't have a participation, but we will have a participation next week, uh, either Monday or, or, or Wednesday, okay? Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I, I should also clarify since uh, um, somebody asked a question about participation. 
So far, we have done two participation. The first participation is asking you to register uh, your team. And the second participation is that you will be able to use your team to actually be able to communicate with a server. So I know some of you are being added late and some of you have some technical difficulty. So as long as I actually see you using um, mobility underscore um, send or mobility underscore uh, dump to actually communicate for your team, then essentially we will count both your credit for participation one and participation two. And the third participation, just let you know, we're not going to do that because it's more difficult to do it online. I like to do it in person. Uh, we, uh, unless I um, uh, uh, announce differently, the coming Monday, we will have an in-person class. Uh, we'll go back to campus. Um, uh, we'll, I will be watching. If anything happened uh, between now and then, I might make a change. I just want to make sure that the student's safety uh, is my num number one uh, uh, priority, my number one concern. Okay, so if we're going to go to the campus, then I'm going to have you to do a participation. And this time the participation is related to homework four, which I want two team to actually submit an entry, which actually include both teams. So essentially saying that this two team, you're going to commit to each other and you're going to basically review each other's homework three design implementation. Okay, so just respond to that. All right. All right, so I'm actually going to give an example about um, polymorphism. Um, so, um, for example, we talk about on Wednesday the concept of communable, and the communable actually we talk about that on Monday. I forgot about that. Sorry, and and the communable is the parent class of both person and the team. So communable could be a single person, which is then I'm going to do a class person. By the way, I should make a change here. I just realized I already changed this to SP person. Okay, now I'm happy. Okay, so communable is the parent class of both SP person and the team, the class team. Okay, they're both classes, they're both the source code, everything is under the mobility uh, GitHub link. And please, uh, the reason I give you that GitHub link is for you to uh, try to get a compile and try to look into that and try to see what's going on. It is going to help you definitely a lot for handling your homework assignment number four. Okay, the, the syntax, how do I do this? How do I actually implement the JSON to object? And you can follow that and then uh, bring that concept back, bring that uh, skill back to uh, solving the homework for uh, issue. Okay, so we have this class, this is called class hierarchy. And this, by the way, because we don't have a, a, a single parent, this is called single inheritance. Um, so in this single inheritance class hierarchy, and we have three different class and all of them, as, let me actually just, just uh, uh, pause on that. I just want to tell you that, okay, if I actually um, uh, just look at the object, when I look at the object, it looks like is a communable. Okay, it's a communable object. And the communable object actually has a, um, a MESA, a member function called dump to JSON. Um, so the thing is that whenever I call dump to JSON, then the behavior of the uh, dump to JSON might be polymorphic among just the three classes. So even though the object is a communable object, but when I call it, I'm actually not sure whether which version of the of the dump to JSON that it should execute. Is that going to be the commutable version? Is going to be SP person? Is going to be team? You can see that 
there, there are three, at least in this simple example, there are three uh, possibilities. And so you can see that it's the same interface to a commutable object, but the behavior might be different. Three, that's actually what the definition uh, was talking about, meaning that it's the same interface but you have different classes in the first definition. The second definition saying that we'll have function with the same name, but with different behavior. The reason it has different behavior is because for each of the different classes, you have a different implementation. Okay, so I'm just going into the, the, the source code a little bit under the mobility uh, folder that you can take a look. Okay, so maybe I just directly go to the GitHub. Yeah, my window always covered by this. Where is my GitHub? Ah, forget. It. Uh, I'll just use my uh, terminal window. <clears throat> so let's look at commutable. So commutable, you can see that it's a class and it has a function called sum to JSON. And in commutable.cpp, we actually have a function called dump to JSON, which is only print saying that it's, it's a base called commutable. Okay, now let's actually take a look at sp person dot h, which is a child class of commutable. And inside this, I also has a function called dump to JSON. And now let's actually take a look what that function looks like. So over here, you can see that you have a dump to JSON, which is this function is somewhat different from the implementation of the one in commutable.cpp. And likewise, you have, uh, maybe we should do this because, because Ting is probably the most complicated one. And inside the thing, I also has this part is dump to JSON. And, and thing is that over here, you can see that I want to show you this for different things. Number one, I want to show you they are there indeed in this uh, small example. I have a three different version of dump to JSON. Their their interface is looks exactly the same. It didn't take any parameter. They always return a JSON value. And, and the thing is that inside, number one, they're different. There's three version because they actually got binded to different class, even in the single uh, class hierarchy, but the same function. Okay, I actually like one of the definition I want to show you. It, it actually really talk about this. Uh, let me see. I have I have this. Uh, um, not this example, but the other, the other. I'm actually trying to see what is the base. Okay, here is an example. Um, it says somewhere. Uh, in this, basically, you have to look at polymorphs and you have to look at whether they actually belong to the same uh, class hierarchy. And, and that is actually what we what's happening here is that this kind of polymorphism is not, when we say talk about different classes, is usually not about different classes not belong to the same class hierarchy. It's usually when we say the behavior is going to be different according to different classes, but it's important they all belong to the same class hierarchy. And typically 
when we were given the interface, the interface usually is as some of the parent level classes. And that that's that's when you when you have done some programming in uh, a virtual function, you will actually get exactly why this has to be true in order for polymorphism in C++ to make sense. Okay, so that, that is the first thing. We have a few functions, but, but I also want to take this opportunity to actually talk about this part of the code. So uh, this part of the code is fine. You have, a, you have an attribute, which is all about the string, uh, but this part of the code is interesting. This particle is about a um, attribute in the class ting, which it, by the way is a child class of the class communable. But in this ting.h, which is a class ting, it has an attribute which is an array. So, uh, sorry, just do this part very quickly. So you can see that the ting has this array and this array is called member. So this is the first time, uh, no, not the first time. I already tell you about this, but but um, very briefly. So now I'm going to reiterate this. So this is a template called vector. You can think about a vector is a, um, is a C++ version of an array. And yet this array has, a better interface for people to uh, operate on an array. So essentially, the the vector was was handled uh, as a way of template. So a template is that the the C plus plus want to define some data structure or define some code, and then you can actually provide some parameter and such that the code will be uh, automatically uh, generated for that particular parameter. In this case, the parameter is SP person in this case. So in template, usually if you see this smaller sign or greater than sign, if you see a pair like this, that's usually some kind of template, okay, in C++. So essentially this basically say, hey, I have a vector, but a vector of what? And that, what is parameterized. So that's why it's basically a vector of SP person. So essentially, this is saying that the variable name is called member. I have a uh, attribute, which is the belong to ting, and that is the attribute's name is member. And what's the member? Is basically a vector or an array of SP person object. Okay, so, so that's, that's what the declaration. So over here, you can see that how I actually use that. So essentially, I uh, let me just use uh, this example. So this to the member, just like uh, this, is, is the pointer uh, referred to self. So this to the member essentially reference to this member attribute belong to this particular object. And you can see that it's a vector. So I said the vector is an array. So that's why I can just use, you see that I'm using the array syntax. I said this member and I said the index I for that array. So remember it's a vector of SP person. That means every single element of the array is an SP person. And therefore this whole part put in here is what? It is a reference to a SP person or the ice element of this array. So as long as is an SP person is an object, then I'm going to call dump to JSON. Okay, so that is essentially the how how can we actually specify what is a vector in C plus plus and how to use it. I mean. Pretty much using the um, using the interface of vector, it's very similar to what you did for an array in your ECF36A, but with a better interface. So here is the difference. 
So usually, typically, you have an array, and the array in C, typically, you don't know how many element the array you have. You typically need to kind of have another counter for you to actually count how many elements that's in, in the array. That's actually the design about the C array. Well, in C++ in vector, we need to address this because it's kind of inconvenient for me to always have to track because if I use array, I should always know that how many elements I have in the array. So in vector, it has a function. So what is it this to the member? This to the member is what? Is a vector. It's a vector of SP person. That's what members define. So inside the vector, it has a function, has a member function always defined, it's called size. So size is a function, it will return the number of elements that's actually in the vector or in the array, if you want to say that. So that's why it's typically when you use a vector, you actually write a loop looks like this. If you write a loop looks like this, this is almost identical to how you would have uh, written a piece of code to handle C array, except the vector basically tell you the boundary about the array or number of elements. That's why you said you put the index started with zero. By the way, this is just like a C, it started with zero. And then until two, the member dot size, it has to be smaller than. So the essentially is the element is indexed by zero all the way to size, whatever integer they give to you minus one. Okay, that, that, is, that is a typical way to do it. So just to let you know, um, uh, two things. Number one, now you see some example about programming uh, in, in how, to, how to use a vector. Okay, pretty much if you understand this piece of code, you essentially know everything you should need to know about using uh, the uh, standard template vector. Okay, and, and plus this code, remember that the vector, you need to parameterize saying that, well, what kind of array is that? You just say it's SP person. So this is actually one of the nice design. Okay. I, I, I do want to actually say something about, about uh, learning programming. Um, a learning programming, um, it's 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 not that efficient if you try to read from page to page to a textbook. In my opinion, textbook like the one I gave it to you is just used as a reference, and and in fact, I I personally think that using. Uh, um, uh, Google to help me to search example sometimes is more effective for me to quickly address this. So don't don't expect you um, don't expect yourself or me uh, within this ten weeks be able to cover and master uh, all the important concept in. Um, uh, in C++. Uh, essentially, what you need to learn is that you look at other people's example, or in this case, your instructor's example, and try to read it and try to see if you you be able to learn the concept or be able to duplicate with your own compiler, your own uh, environment, and see how that works. That's actually the best way for you to learn. Okay, I have some question I need to address. Yes, yeah, size is a building function. It's, by the way, it's a member function, okay? A vector is a template, but when you create a template vector or something, it became an object, and then therefore it has that. Okay, all right, good. <clears throat> okay, let's actually go back if you understand this array. And okay, so that is the, that is the, um, the, the basic concept about usually when say, what is polymorphic is essentially for us to, to realize that when I have a object, which is in the parent class, when I call the function, that the real behavior of the function might be different than whatever assigned to that particular class. So in this case, we actually have a three uh, function 
uh, commutable SP person and team. And in this case, exactly which function will be called is actually depending on how you roll the program. Um, so for example, if this is a virtual function, like what we did in this example, dump to JSON, then essentially I will, I will need to determine whatever the object that represent by this commutable, when it was created, what was the class? It was created as a SP person, or it was created as a thing, or it was created as a commutable. So depending on what, it, what was the situation, then we will determine which version of the code we're going to ask you. So essentially that is a runtime decision. In some sense, this is actually uh, in, in some of the um, 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 object-oriented programming, they differentiate the difference between static polymorphism and the dynamic polymorphism. So what is a dynamic polymorphism means that you cannot determine at compiler time. You have to wait until runtime. That's why it's important as programmer, you always try to see that, well, this particular decision was determined by compiler time or runtime, because that is, um, if you don't, under, you sometimes confuse about this, this is actually going to create some misunderstanding and likely to introduce a bug when you try to apply the concept of polymorphism. Okay, all right. So uh, I'm actually going back to say why I'm talking about this. The reason is that I have another class. <clears throat> I have another class called message. So this is a class that's actually quite interesting because this class message is, 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 not, a, is not in the class hierarchy, by the way, but it actually used this uh, two variable, uh, two variable one uh, called communable is a from to two. So essentially from represent where this particular message was sending from and the other ones to which destination. And you can see that this is already introduced something quite interesting because when you do this from to two, when I try to really understand what is that from, for example, I want to really uh, exam the content about the from. Uh, or calling a function such as dump to JSON or JSON to object, this kind of common function belong to that class hierarchy I show you. Then essentially you can see that, oh, whether um, it is which, which version of the dump to JSON I need to be called. And that is actually uh, usually by magic that it should automatically figure out like a polymorphism. But I want to show you that polymorphism, uh, this is, in fact, I want to tell you that this is quite advanced in the, in the concept of polymorphism is that conceptually, polymorphism looks simple. It's just a class hierarchy. It's just determined which function to call. But when you into a particular programming language, in practice, there are some important uh, um, um, detail that you cannot neglect and which that's why I want to actually show you why I'm doing this. Okay. All right. I want to see if there is any question. I want to take a look. There are so many things. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. I think I'm Yeah, okay. What's the difference between a uh, vector and array? I mean, thank you for uh, the, the the answer that indeed, yeah, vector are easier to add element. Um, um, and also I, I do want to say that array is a C concept. And uh, um, in C++, we come up with a bunch of new data structure such as a uh, vector, such as the other one I, I like a lot is called map. Um, so uh, I will actually talk about 
uh, standard template STL in C++, which is actually cover all of them. So vector is one of them, which I want to give you a taste right now, okay? Yeah, maybe it's vector is actually uh, comparable to dynamic array in Java. I think that's right. Okay, so um, Carlos is asking why is commutable followed by M sign? Okay, that's that's the question I really like. Thank you very much, Carlos. Um, so anybody want to actually uh, say why uh, I need to put this M, M sign here? Sorry, took it back. What is that M sign? Anybody want to help me? Just turn on your mic and talking. It gets the address. Uh, okay. It's no. If if in C, if we put the M sign before something before the a variable, it is an address. But if it's the data type, okay, it's, it's different that the C compiler will be able to tell whether it's, it's actually a variable, like a front, or is a type. So if it's a type, which is with an M sign, this is called a reference. I mean, it's not really an address, by the way. It's not an address. The address, typically, if I put, for example, somewhere in the code, I, I said from, and I say, wait a minute, where is my mouse? Okay, my mouse is here. If I put an M here, this is represent the address or from. Of course, it will have a syntax error because I'm not supposed to, uh, in the class declaration definition, to with that uh, M sign. So communable, any or any type that I have an M sign, this means a reference. So. In programming, we have uh, this uh, a few concepts. Um, you might have heard about this concept. Let me actually just write it down here. There's an important concept called call by value or call by reference or call by name. So there are a few types of call that's actually uh, pretty uh, um, uh, they're, they're somewhat differently. Let me let me review that. When I do a call by value, means a function, I'm calling a function which is called by value. That means that I'm actually make a copy about that value. Pass that copy of the value into the function or into whatever context I'm dealing with. That's called by value. Call by value is essentially is a copy. But call by reference is that we're using the same memory space. Essentially, when I call a function, think about what is a call by reference is that I want to call with Felix Wu as a person, and I make a clone of Felix Wu and pass into the function or I actually let the whole Felix will go into that function and let people modify. So essentially, call by value means that you are actually dealing with a clone of that information. So such that whatever things you change in the call by value will not change the original copy. But call by reference, meaning that you're going to, you're going to change the master original copy. Okay, that's the difference between. So essentially what we did here, commutable and you will find this a little bit interesting. You say, well, this is not a function. This is a class. And why you want to declare something as reference? Okay, so here is an issue is that I must take this. Oh, sorry. I must declare this. And, and when I say commutable and 
I, I actually have a two different way to do this. I, I want you to actually think about what's the difference between those two. Well, this is this is actually an excellent question. I really like this. Okay, I'm just looking at from. I want you to see that what's the what's the difference between this two? And, and by the way, if you do this, then I have to change this as well. This is related to the um, the um, the constructor. How I define the constructor. So let me actually tell you that this is option two. And this is option two. <clears throat> okay, so what's the difference between option number one, the way I specify a variable called from, a member called from and its constructor. What's the difference between option one and option two? Anybody want to uh, provide some guess? Option one would take it by reference, but option two would pass by value. Okay, good. Yeah, that's correct. And, and thank you. So essentially what happened is that when I call the constructor, when I have the communable is an object, um, option two, this become a commutable object. But option one, I actually refer to the original commutable object. And let me ask you another difference. If I do this, do you think that the content of the communable object in this case, they're the same. I know the option two, I, I need to make a copy, right? And option one, I don't need to make a copy. That's the difference between call by value and call by reference. But I'm asking, should the content be exactly the same in this case between those two options, option one and option two? This is a very tricky question, by the way. Um, this lecture um, um, is, is actually very professional. I can tell you that. A lot of uh, professional C++ programmer, they, they actually don't know why they need to use reference in this case. Unfortunately, your textbook didn't talk about this at all as well. That's why I, I said textbook is for reference. Uh, it is not necessarily uh, uh, give you the comprehensive information. Like you need to basically uh, look at this kind of example, the code to learn. Okay, so what's the, my question is, is the content the same? Is the content of from the same from option one and option two? Between option uh, the same, between option number one and number two. What do you think? Let me see if somebody mentioned. Good, uh, Christopher, you say is no, right? Uh, well, assuming I didn't modify, then what's, what's the, Okay, so so okay, people are getting the 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 question, um, but I want I, you didn't. Uh, I think you're 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 heading the right direction, but I want to give you more hint on this question. The difference between option one and option two has something to do with polymorphism. The the answer is no. They 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 they're probably not going to be the same but it has to do with polymorphism. Okay, so let me actually tell you that the difference is polymorphism, why? Because if I actually do the option two, now I'm going to comment that out because I know this is 
wrong piece of code. If you do option two, I'm actually going to copy, but the compiler has no information about what to copy because what could be communable from the polymorphism perspective? The communable could be a communable, could be created as a communable, but it could be created as an SP person or it could create it as a team. When you actually doing call by value, that means I only copy the information about only for the communable to this message, to this class message. So meaning that if I have other information, which is contained in SP person and or, or team, they will be, they will not be included because it's not being copied. Because by the way, this is runtime concept. Compiler has no way to know whether that communable was a team or was a SP person. That's kind of uh, tricky and evil because you cannot determine at uh, at uh, compiler time. And therefore, if you do cop, uh, call by um, call by value, then essentially uh, you will not include those parts. So essentially what, what has to happen in order for the programmer, this become, sorry, become programmer's respon uh, responsibility. If, if you want to use polymorphism, if you want to preserve the, the, the different possible behavior that's actually included in the polymorphism, that you have to use option one. You have to reference that because when you reference that, then essentially you're not making copy. You're not making any assumption about what information is there because you just refer to the original copy. And that original copy was created by whatever. It was actually still there. So all the virtual function, by the way, when we talk about homework assignment number five, you will have a chance to really actually see what's the function pointer, the trick they, they actually need to uh, handle such that they can actually deal with that, uh, the, the polymorphics uh, implementation, which is going to be homework assignment number five. Don't worry about that right now. But the thing is that at this moment, I want you to know is that to use polymorphic in C++, in this context, you should know the difference that you have to use the M sign instead of using not M sign. Because if you don't use the, including that M sign, uh, essentially you, 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 your, your code will destroy some of the perspective about uh, polymorphism, okay? This, I, I know this is a very, uh, very tricky question. Um, okay, I, I, I should say this. This this part is so um, challenging that um, I I will not ask uh, this type of question in midterm of or final exam. I'll just let you know. So just enjoy this concept to know there is a difference and learn how to use it and learn how to develop your own program. But um, conceptually, unless you actually roll the same program a few times and gradually you will learn this concept. As I said, many of the professional object programmer, uh, they still don't know that th th this is why that you have to uh, use reference at time because you want to preserve polymorphism. Okay, that's why I also make polymorphism, why it's one of the most difficult uh, um, concept in object programming, even for the very experienced programmer. By the way, just to let you know, I have somebody who actually wrote C++ program uh, for, um, uh, I would say at least 30 years. And uh, I, because he's my friend, I said, this is what I'm teaching. He looked at this as he said, uh, I never know that that actually that's the reason I have to use a reference over there. Okay, so just to let you know, this is something which is, um, um, I hope you, 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 you can at least get a sense about why I'm emphasizing this one, okay? Okay, any question?
Yes, but for your question, um, the, the reason is that the you look at the constructor, the constructor is like this, right? I mean, the constructor is a commutable. So when you call the function, when you when you call the function, you're going to convert a SP object. You're going to convert the SP object into a commutable. And when you're not using the M, they're going to only copy. If you what's the syntax of commutable? The syntax of commutable basically say you're going to do a, um, a call by value. And therefore the compiler will only copy the communable part of that SP person object if you use option number two, which means that you lost the, 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 the capability of doing virtual function. But if you're doing communable as a reference, then there's no copying. As long as there is no copying, you're still referring to the original object, then whatever, the configuration for virtual function is still valid. Does that answer your question, Bo? Okay, good. Okay, so so that, that's great. So we're going to move on. Okay. Okay, so um, this is essentially uh, help you to uh, understand what is uh, um, the, the concept of polymorphism. Um, at the concept level, you just need to know that it's a, it's a high level, um, I will say a concept for you to be able to trigger different um, um, version, different behavior of the same uh, function or variable interface. But in the implementation, you actually have to see that depending on what programming language you're using and the realization of polymorphism might be tricky. For example, virtual function, uh, how you can, how, how you're going to use the virtual function that this example presenting a mobility uh, dot HM, uh, sorry, mobility uh, GitHub link is actually give you a very uh, detailed example about how, how you should do that. Okay, so um, so now I'm going back to homework four. I, I want to talk a little bit more about homework four before I jump into uh, multiple inheritance, okay? And, and by the way, I just sent out an announcement is that typically at this point, I spend some time to review uh, the, the a session about pointer, about address in ECF36B, because it is critical for me to uh, talk about this memory layout concept before you can understand my next subject about multiple inheritance. Um, so this, this, this time I decide, um, I will try this. I will actually, I already send you a link to understand a lecture I gave uh, a few months ago on the same subject. I hope that you can actually review the by yourself and then you just ask me a question if you don't understand anything I said in that lecture, okay? If necessary, I need to, I, I, I might need to do it again, okay? So no problem, either way. Okay, so, okay, I'm coming back to homework four. And in the homework four, I said there are two parts. That number one is you have to set a collaboration relationship with the other team. And uh, either Monday or Wednesday, I'm actually going to do another participation to allow teams to be able to register uh, through the uh, whatever the interface we did before. Okay. Um, so from now on, please start talking to uh, other team and try to make a commitment to that. Okay. Um, so the other part, of homework four is is what I call uh, JSON to object. So it is is uh, is uh, uh, the other direction of uh, dump to JSON. When you actually dump from C to uh, to JSON, you use this function dump to JSON. But when you have a JSON, I want to convert it back to C plus plus. I use this code JSON to object. Okay, so that that is that is the function uh, we need to deal with. Okay, so what I want to do next. Is is go in a little bit more into JSON to object. So I want to actually 
perform this exercise uh, uh, for today is that, um, just check how much time do I, oh, I already, already over. Okay, give me five minutes, I will, I will finish this. Um, if you need to go, please just go, I, I, it will be recorded. Okay, so um, I, I want to show you exactly how um, you can, you, you will be able to, so I, I already told you earlier how to do vector. So vector is a C++ uh, concept in array. But now I'm actually going to tell you, well, this is the array in, in the JSON to object. You have the other array concept, which that array is actually in the JSON format. And I want to actually teach you also how do you write program to process JSON array as well, because you need to know both the vector and the JSON array, then you can do this JSON to object correctly. So I'm going to spend some time to talk about an example. So this is a part of the uh, message. So, so particularly we're looking at from. So what's a from? From is a commutable. So commutable could be a thing or to be could be a, a person, but essentially in JSON encoding, that this between this curly bracket, this pair of curly bracket here, is actually encoding the exact information in the C++ uh, object. So first, I want to tell you that based on the slide you have seen, uh, remember, I said from is a what? Is a commutable. And I want to ask you, just look at this. Is this from, a SP person or it's a team? Anybody still here? It's a team, right? Okay, some of you already answered. I don't want to read the chat. It's a team because I actually encoded a class name say team. So essentially this is a trick I also need to develop because also because polymorphism. Because if I don't have this line, class name ting, then essentially for the JSON to object, that I will have a difficulty decide what object I'm going to create. Because I have to have some way to tell the class under a polymorphic class hierarchy that what class that is. So based on that, then I know it's a ting. Okay, if it's a ting, that's great. But Inside the thing, I have a one key value pair, and this key is called member. Voila, that's actually correspond to the member we talk about. And then now this one is the JSON representation about the array. So what is a JSON representation of array? It is actually a bracket between a pair of bracket and inside the pair bracket is a basically some elements separate by comma. Okay, so this could be, in this case, there is a one object, two objects. So this is an array of an object. And then basically what is the type of object I don't need to worry about, which I will tell you, oh, I actually need to worry about because the class name is SP person. Okay, so, so essentially is an array the the whole front is an uh, is is a uh, is an object team, but you have an array, and the array is actually a a an array of uh, SP person. So if you look at the JSON about this is essentially produced by dump to JSON from a message. So now it's actually preserved the information. We need to actually just roll it back, okay? And then I want to show you what the code looks like. Okay, so let me go back here. <clears throat> so this code is in uh, message.cpp. So now let's actually look at the code. So this part of the code is just, as I said on Wednesday, it was just checking whether uh, the JSON object is actually uh, according to the, the, the format, okay? But uh, let's look at this line. You probably don't, not familiar with this line. So if you say input JSON 
you provide the first key, which is a from, it's actually going to give you the whole thing. The whole thing here is the key is a from. So, so whenever you say, um, let me just say this. When you say uh, JSON input from, by this, it's actually going to give you the following, the whole thing, okay? Give you the whole thing because this actually, uh, when, you, when you do this part, is actually going to give you the object, this part, okay? So now, what is, how about class name? Within here, how do I do this class name? It's very simple. In JSON programming, you just say class name. If you do like this, JSON from class name, it basically go one level down because this from is an object is get to here. And then if find another uh, key value pair, you got a class name. And then essentially when you do JSON input from class name, you're actually going to get this one. Okay, so that is actually how uh, I consider this is a very nice friendly way of assessing the information. So when you do JSON programming, my experience is that you actually need to have a clear mind about what is the structure about your JSON, what kind of key was there. The rest, you're just using input from class name. You just continue. That's why you go back to my, my code. You look at here what I did, input JSON from, and then I say class name is null, right? That's, that's exactly what I did. And then the, the, the down below here, you see what I did here? I said input JSON from class name dot as string. Is that equal to ting? If it's equal to ting, voila, that's what I'm going to do. And then inside here, I have an array. Let me see, where I did I do the array part? Oh, I didn't do the array part because the array part is actually handled by JSON to object of the ting. So I will show you this. I will continue this on Monday because I don't want to be past 10 minutes after. Fine. This is actually in ting.cpp. If you come here to JSON to object, by the way, now I'm actually going down here. Now you see that I'm actually in the array. This is again, input JSON members also has a similar, just like a vector, I have a, um, a function called size. And for each of the size, I said input JSON member, see that? I'm just saying I. Okay, so essentially, let's go back here. The first element is basically member and then bracket zero. And then the second one, is bracket one, okay? Everything started with zero, just to let you know, just this part is consistent. So essentially you see I is equal to zero to input JSON member dot size. It's just like a vector, okay? But JSON programming is the same. And based on this, you actually handle the array and you can see that I'm actually calling the SP person's JSON to object, okay? So, so this just, tell you that uh, two things I, I, I try to uh, convey today. Number one is what is a vector in C++ and what's the vector or an array in JSON? And then how do you actually be able to access each of the elements? If you learn this too about their linguistics, then it's, it's not that uh, uh, difficult to actually implement the JSON to object. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Let me see if there is any question. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so you all have a good weekend. We're glad that the case was resolved, uh, but still be, uh, be careful, be safe, especially into the evening when you walk to the area, okay? Just, just uh, always, uh, I'm not, ask you to be panicking or something, but just always be alert to what's going on. Don't, don't play video game while you're walking, okay? All right, have a good weekend, bye.